All you got to do is send a link to the user. And once they click onto the link, that's it. Game over. We would have access into the entire user account. Wait, what? You don't believe me? Watch to the end and you find out about it. And remember kids, hacking is illegal. If you want to hack, try hacking Hacker Loy. Yeah, maybe you should do that so that I can find out your IP address on behalf of you. And then after which I can help you check your computers, I can check your emails, your passwords, your credit card information, your Wi-Fi passwords and all of that. That's a pretty good service for me and it's free of charge. So if you want to hack, try hacking Mr. Hacker Loy, okay? All right, so first of all, this is what will happen. You have a website over here. And what we're going to do now is to test the website to look up for our openings that we can go after. And of course, you have Mr. Hackalon, your best friend on the left. And what Mr. Hackalon would do is we'll target the server and see what other input fields that we can then inject over into the target site that will then be displayed back onto the website whenever we push a specific value into the site. And there are many examples of that. So one example, it could be a comment that you can provide as a feedback for a product. So that comment here means that we are able to easily inject our own value and then it gets displayed over here. And because of the result of the display, we are then able to throw in our own information, our own script. And as a result of that, that's what we call the cross-site scripting attack. So we're using our own script to control what we want the site to do. And for today's case, we're targeting an opening from JavaScript. And if you want to become the ultimate hacker, just like Mr. Hacker Loy, remember to smash the like button, turn on subscription, so that you can be kept abreast of all the latest ethical hacking penetration testing tutorials that we're doing for you. So right in front of us, we're on Kyle Linux, and we have, of course, a website that we're going to target. And of course, you can use any of your favorite operating system. It could be Windows XP, it could be Windows 10, it could be even your Parrot OS, so any of those operating systems, you can easily use them as part of running your penetration testing, because ultimately, it's not about the OS. OS. What's truly important is what is between a keyboard and a chair, and that's the person, and that's you. That's the most important part of all. And we're currently logged in as administrator, as you can see right here on the top right corner. And what we want to do is just test out what can a site do. Okay, so here we can see the following. This password is for admin, and if I click generate password, it creates some random string of characters that we can easily use for password. I clicked again, and likewise, it's being highlighted for us. So what's more important here is that you can see from the top, which is the URI, you're able to highlight here that we have the username equal admin. So what if I change the value of username? What will happen to the site? So now, for example, if I was to change the username to say hacker loy, what would happen right here if I go ahead and enter on that? And we can see the following. This password is for hacker Loy. So this information that we're able to push into the site, which get responded back here as this password is for Hacker Loy. So let's dive a little deeper and see what's going on behind the scene. So we go to the top right corner under Proxy Proxy and go ahead and select under Burp Suite to be our interceptor. So we want to look at all these different type of requests are hitting our server. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter Burp Suite. All right, so now we're launching Burp Suite Community Edition. And once we're in here, all we got to do now is to turn on interception and we can see all the information of the interception, all the requests are hitting into the site. And once we're here, go on the proxy tab and we can see the intercept is on. So if I go back over into Mozilla Firefox, I go ahead and hit enter on this again. We got an interception right here. So I click send over to repeater. So once we're in the repeater tab, you can see right here, all right, we have the username and all this information. And then we can, of course, go ahead and click send and we get a response back. And from the response, we can search specifically for the username value. So in this case, we have hacker loy and you can see that there is one match. So we can see here that is within a script. It has try and it has a get element by ID. So this is an opportunity for us to look up for where is this being placed. So of course, if I search for ID user name input, we can see here we have another option, which is TDID equal, okay? So of course, if we go back over into the JavaScript, this is the part that we are trying to hijack, putting our own script into the target site. So what I can do now is go ahead and copy this whole chunk of script, right click, all right, go ahead and do a control C for this so we can copy. And now we can open up any of your favorite editor. All right, so in this case, I can say open up one of the editor here. I paste the information right here, okay? And we can see the following information. So we've got script. So let's go ahead and make this font size a little bigger so it's easier for you to see. Okay, so let's go ahead and select on that. So we can see right here, we have script, 
try get alumni ID. And what we want to do here is that this is the injection point that you can see right here. We have this password is for hacker loy. So say for example, if I was to go ahead and add up a double quote right here and do a semicolon, that would immediately end off the document dot get element by ID. All right. So what I can do now is I can possibly even close off the try. And what I can do next is to possibly, all right, end off the entire try by entering say catch. And I can literally use the same one that we have over here, which is catch E. But in this case, I don't even bother about catching the error, printing out the error and so on. So with that, over here now, we have the opportunity to inject our own script. So one example here we have is alert document.cookie and see what happens. Are we able to get the information to document cookie and then after which we can end it off here. And what we can do next is go ahead and do try. Okay, so what we are doing here is we're trying to end off the rest of the script. Okay, so here we have try. And what we can do next is to go ahead and open up a semicolon. And of course, we can enter whatever value we want. Okay, so maybe I say hacker loy is very handsome. Okay, and I put an equal and then I close this off. That's it done. We have now created our own payload that can target into the input field of the JavaScript. And here comes the exciting part. Now, all I got to do is copy the payload over here. Okay. And of course, what I can do is copy on this, go back to say Firefox, and I turn off the Foxy proxy. All right. And now all I got to do is paste it over here under the URI. So you can see here we have Hacker Loy, we have the closing off. All right. And then after which we have catch and so on and so forth. So I go ahead and hit enter in this in three, two, one, hit enter on that. Boom, that's it, we're in, it's game over. We have managed to hijack into the system. We found the vulnerability to the site, and this is a powerful injection point for us. And moving forward, we can use this injection point to do all sorts of really amazing and crazy stuff. And what kind of crazy stuff do we have? Of course, it's stew, the cookie, and after which be able to log into that user's session without even knowing the password, and that's crazy. So going back to our payload, what we want to do now is to change up the alert document cookie because that is just going to be too alarming. So what we want to do now is change up a couple of all this different information. So the most key part is the one right here to have highlighted, which is alert document cookie. So we want to change this up a little bit. So what I can do now is I can say, for example, create a new variable and I can call this variable, say, in this case, perhaps into a new image. All right. So from a new image, what I can do now is I can want to send information over. So I put, say, for example, I dot source, and we want to target and send the information into our hackers machine. So in this case, I can enter the IP address. And of course, if it is across the internet, we can enter, say, the domain name that we have. So in this case, we have 192.168.0.192. And I can do a slash question mark. And what I can do here now is to add in the document cookie. So we have plus document dot cookie, and then followed by the semicolon to close it off. And that's it done. This is beautiful. And what I can do now is to make sure that everything is within the same line so that we can send it over under the URI section. I haven't placed in the port number. All right, let's go ahead and put 1337. All right, before we get started, we want to set up our hacker server. So by setting up a hacker server, say for example, in this case, I can do a NC or right, dash NLVP followed by 1337. So we're setting up our listener. Okay, so in this case, we're listening on 1337. Now go ahead and copy the payload that you have created, do a right click, copy, go back over to Burp Suite. And what we can do now is go ahead and paste the information that we have here. And what you want to do is to go ahead and highlight the payload that you have, do a control U so that we have a URL and code. And once you have this information, you can copy this. Okay, you can go back over into Firefox in this case, you can paste information right here. So I can copy and paste it. So this is the payload that we have. Go ahead and hit enter in three, two, one, hit enter on this. Now, if I go back over to our terminal, which we have our listener, you can see right here, we managed to get the PHP session ID right here, okay? So you can see from the information over here, I can go ahead and copy the selection, okay? Because what we want to do now is to hijack into the session. I go over into a browser, I create a new private window, which means that I may be logged in using a completely different computer, as long as you send the link over to the user. And once you have that, all you got to do right now is go ahead and go over into the same site, all right? So in this case, perhaps we go into Mutilla Day, and I go to the top right corner, all right? I go into say more tools, web developers tools. I can see right here, we have PHP session ID. So if you see the top right corner, we are not logged in. And what I can do now is to go ahead and highlight the value. I double click onto the value. I paste it over. I hit enter on it. I do a refresh on the browser and that's it. Boom, we're in.
And this link can easily be sent over social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so on and so forth. And all you want to do is to ensure that the user click onto the link. And this is what we call phishing. And what you want to do is to ensure that once the user is logged in, you click onto the link, that's it, game over. Isn't that amazing? How easily we could inject that one script at the target site. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. Remember like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest ethical hacking and penetration testing tutorials.